everyone, Cody here, and today I want to talk to you about something uh, that I think is very important for creative people, and that is how to deal with imposter syndrome. So imposter syndrome is something that pretty much anyone who does creative work will eventually face, uh, whether you're you know you work with music or art or you're an author really anything it doesn't even matter if you do it for a living or if it's part of a job imposter syndrome is this thing where you kind of have like an identity crisis and you start to feel as if people are going to find you out or that you are a fraud okay and it's this feeling where you you feel like no matter how good you do, or no matter the work that you do, no matter how good it might be, you also feel like just eventually one day people are going to just decide that you're no longer good at that thing, or that you're no longer the person that you said you were. So for example, if, if I'm an artist, the imposter syndrome for me is that one day people are just gonna say, you know what, your work sucks. Or they're gonna say, you know, you're not really an artist. Or, I know your background, I've seen your work, and how, how is it that you can say that you're an artist, right? So it's stuff like that, and it's, it really comes down to uh, doubt, right? So, so you come up with the self-doubt that you are good enough to do that thing that, that you do creatively. The problem with imposter syndrome is not only that it's, it affects the way that you work, but also that it's really just an implied thing. It's not really there. It's not a real thing. It's just something that you feel, which a lot of the things that we fear don't actually come to fruition. But let's talk about, first off, something that's very important to understand about this, and then we'll talk about kind of how to deal with it. So the point I want to make is that you're not alone if you feel like that. You're not alone if you feel like your work isn't good enough or that people are just going to suddenly uh, think that your stuff isn't good enough or that even if people say it's good, you just never feel like it's good enough because you feel like you're a fraud. Everybody that does creative work, and I would venture to guess that people who don't even do creative work but, but just do things where they actually have to think in, in maybe a position at work or a hobby, it doesn't matter. Anyone who has to make those types of decisions, I would argue that they, any person, uh, will eventually face this dilemma. So it's not just people who do this as a living or just do creative work. Pretty much every person will deal with this at some point because really it comes down to, again, self-doubt and this feeling um, of insecurity. So it's all, it's all about insecurity, right? And insecurity is, is really just up here. You know, whether you're insecure or secure about something, that's all in your own head. But let's come back to what I wanted to say. Everyone deals with this. So my the best example I have to give is Stephen King. Now, Stephen King is literally one of the most prolific authors there ever was, if not the single-handed most prolific author by himself. Now, I don't, I'm not talking to James Patterson, who has a team of writers and they write under his name. I'm talking about single most prolific author, okay? Now, you could argue some other authors have more works, but let's just stick with, you know, maybe top 10, right? But anyway, if you, I don't remember where I found it. Okay, so I'll just be transparent with you. But if you look up Stephen King uh, imposter syndrome or Stephen King fraud, uh, feels like a fraud or something like that in Google, I'm pretty sure you'll find what I was talking about. But there was an, an article that, or there was a piece where he was talking about how he even has felt that way at times. So the person, was, like literally one of the most prolific authors of our time, of any time, has felt that feeling of imposter syndrome that he feels like one day people are just gonna wake up and stop buying his books or they're gonna stop you know they're going to stop reading his material or they're just gonna suddenly turn on him and hate the work that he's been doing all this time like they're just gonna realize oh well, uh, how did how can he even write you know look at his background or you know who's to say that this guy is an author the thing is is that 
it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how successful you are. In fact, I would venture a guess that the people who become more successful probably deal with it more often than the people like me who only do this part time. But even I felt this way because I mean I started painting less than two years ago and I've already sold dozens of paintings and you know some of them worth now hundreds of dollars and it's like you know who's to say that I deserve to be called an artist when I didn't go to school for art I didn't have that real uh, longing for it as a, as a kid and I didn't really um, you know think that I would ever do that as a even as a as a hobby, let alone you know a hobby that's that's a little bit you know gained some traction over time, still can't do it uh, full time or anything. But anyone could say that. But the truth is, is that it doesn't matter because if you're doing the thing, you're showing the proof as you go, right? And so it's important to remember that one, everybody is going to deal with it, right? Every person will deal with this eventually, and some people deal with it all the time, but really the thing of it is, is it's insecurity. And the problem with insecurities is that it's all in your head. It really is all in your head. It doesn't really matter if people think that or not. It really doesn't matter if, if people don't like your stuff. I've had people leave comments either on my Facebook page or message me or leave it on YouTube saying, you know, this is garbage, or, you know, you're not that good. Who cares? Who cares? Listen, there's nothing to be afraid of in putting your stuff out in the world. You're going to get criticism. You're going to get people who just don't like it. I have family and friends that don't like my art. That's okay. You're not a fraud, okay? If you're doing this and you've been doing it and you've, you know, been successful in any means whatever success looks like to you if you if you reached some sort of milestone that you were a proud of then it makes you that thing okay and if you've been able to do the work for an extended period of time then that's all you need you don't need anyone else's validation to tell you that you are that thing or that you're good at that thing you really don't need anyone else. You don't need any external um, permission, essentially, to tell you that you are that thing. If Stephen King is writing books and publishing them, he's an author. It doesn't matter if he sells them. If you wrote a book, it was formatted, and then it was published, you're an author. You don't have to sell a book to be an author. You just have to write it. So if you did the stuff, then you're the thing. You know what I mean? I, I can't put it any any simpler than that. So how did how do you deal with this? How do you deal with this imposter syndrome? First off, you gotta recognize that it's not about anyone else. It's about you doing that thing the best that you can in the capacity that you can. Okay. When I started, I started with very cheap materials. I started with very uh, you know, simple, you know, tools like I started with brushes and I started with cheap canvases and I started with cheap paint because I didn't know any better and I didn't have the practice so I didn't want to sink more money into something that I just didn't understand and so I started it and I made some decent paintings with the best that I had but does that make them as good as the ones that I do now I would say no because I use cheap materials but that's a separate thing the point is is I did the best that I could at that time and I did the work. I put in the work. I, I think I, I made 60 paintings before I sold my first painting. That's a lot. And I, a lot of them were bad. So I, I threw them away or I burned them or whatever I did. The thing is, is that I was doing the thing. So even though I, I didn't feel like an artist at first because I didn't have the experience, as I put in the work, I started to feel more and more like the role. And even let's let's step back for a second even on a personal note sometimes i don't like to tell people i'm an artist because i don't feel it i don't feel like an artist i don't give people my business card and yes i use them because i think they're i think they're a very easy way to share what you do but sometimes i don't tell people that because i feel that they're going to judge me for that okay but guess what it doesn't matter okay 
if you are the thing, then, then be proud of that thing. If you're a songwriter or an author or an artist or whatever, be proud of that thing because it's a very unique position. Now, there are a lot of people that say they're, they're that thing and they're not. And those people are kind of like the opposite, right? Because they are the imposter and they don't feel like it. And I think that's a good thing. Because if you feel that feeling of imposter syndrome, but you're actually doing it, then it's probably a good sign that you're that you're worried about, you know, you're you're placing the emphasis on the wrong things, but you're really worried about the right things. So if you feel that, that's probably a good sign that you're you're putting in the work because you yes, you want to impress people and that's not good. But at the same time it means that you care about it. Because if you care about that thing, then it bothers you if you're not that thing. Does that make sense? So if you're an artist and you're putting in the work to make whatever you make, and you're worried it's you know that people are gonna think that you're not an artist, in a way it's actually very good, and this is how you would deal with it, because you spin it in your favor. If you're worried about not being that thing or not being good at that thing, so if I'm worried about my paintings and that they're not good enough, then it makes me want to do better. So how, this is how you deal with imposter syndrome. One, you recognize that you don't, you probably hear my son, so anyway, I love him. Um, you'll probably hear, uh, you'll probably feel that, you know, if I'm not that thing, then I'm not that thing, right? If I, I'm not an artist, you know, I'm afraid that people are gonna wake up and just think that I'm not an artist, but the, but the truth of the matter is, is that you can use that to propel you to do a good job. So you take that thought captive. You remind yourself that yes, I am that thing. I am an author or an artist or a songwriter and I'm proud of that. But not only that, you use that to propel you to do the best that you can in your position. You don't hide behind it like a shield where you overwork yourself or you, you do the opposite where you procrastinate. You use it to say, yeah, you know what? I'm an artist and I'm proud of that and I'm gonna share that with people. And I'm gonna use that feeling to do the best that I can in the position I'm in. And that is how you deal with it. One, you recognize that everybody deals with this. Two, you recognize that you'll probably deal with it over and over again, and that's okay. It's You're human, people deal with that, that's fine. But the third way that you deal with it is you take that and you spin it the other way, okay? You, you use that feeling to just do the best that you can in whatever capacity you can and you just create the best product or, or outcome that you possibly can. Now, the trap is, is that people will overwork themselves and then they'll think that they have to reach some kind of validation, but again, it, it does not come down to external validation. It does not matter what anyone else thinks. It matters that you think you did a good job, you put it out in the world, and then you move on. Look, you're gonna get the criticism, just accept it. Whether it's good or bad, doesn't matter, right? This video, people are gonna say that this video was too long or, or it was boring or whatever. I don't care. If this helps one person, then that's it. That's all, that, that's all that matters, okay? So stop feeling like you're not good enough. Stop feeling like it matters what everyone else thinks. Stop feeling that, you know, I, I mean, I say stop, all right? It, it, it'll probably come back, it happens. But when I say stop, I mean just stop and think about that and then just use that to to make the best product that you possibly can, okay? That's pretty much it for this video. I apologize if it's a little rambly. Sometimes I, I try to write down my things and then I deviate anyway. But um, I really hope that this video means a lot to you or that it makes you stop and think that one, everybody deals with this, even the best of the best. But two, that you can use that for good because then you can just take that feeling, well, I feel like an imposter, so I really want to just do the best that I can and then just move on. So you just don't focus on it. Let it come up, use that as uh, something to propel you, and then you just move on. And that's it, guys. So I hope this video was good for you. Please like, rate, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in another video. Take care.